<laughs> Did you press it? <laughs> I pressed it. Yeah, I pressed the button. <laughs> All right, you can edit out. You can edit this out anyway. No, no, leave it. In, leave it. In. Everything's good. I pressed the button. The bomb has gone off. <laughs> it's flying over Ireland as we speak. <laughs> yeah, that's what it'd be like. That's what it'd be like. You'd have Biden in the the White House, wouldn't you? He'd be scratching his balls and he'd end up fucking pressing a button or something. I'd imagine. A Les Nielsen type character, yeah. <laughs> yeah, four, four, three. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I was going to say he'd accidentally, you know, the way he, he speaks gibberish. It would actually mean something in Russian, like we're going to blow you to smithereens. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so I probably should uh, introduce this. And I'm so I'm 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 the I'm the presenter. Am I? <laughs> yeah. I thought I, I thought I was just going to drink some beer, and you were going to do all the hard work. <laughs> What the hell? Well, if you want, to, if you want, to, we can, we can. Uh, I, I, I give the the final address or something like that. I don't know. Okay. Um, well, I, I, I was gonna like. <laughs> I, I was, I'm after having about two bears, so don't worry, I'm not that bad. Um, I was, I was struggling with the word apocalyptic. <laughs> yeah, it's not one. It's not one for late in the night, you know. <laughs> I was thinking if I have five bears now, it would be a good test to say that three times: apocalyptic, apocalyptic, apocalyptic. No, not too bad. Um, so I'm, I'm with uh, the German pointer, aka Betwixt. Um, so thanks for joining me. It's a pleasure. I felt it was urgent that we have a look at this movie because uh, anything can happen in the world in the next few days or weeks. So it's better to get this movie review out of the way before <laughs> before the shit hits the fan, maybe. Yeah, I was just going to say, the funny thing is, we planned to, to talk about this film about a, almost a year ago. Mm. And now it seems even more relevant. <laughs> yeah. So we were ahead of our time. We were just too lazy <laughs> to get it out, uh, or I was anyway. Um, so we're talking about the movie uh, in Threads. Um, it's an apocalyptic war drama. It was made for television and it was put out into BBC in 1984. Um, I hadn't seen it at the time. Um, well, I was probably only a few years old. <laughs> but did you see it at the time? I mean, you're, I'd say you're more or less the same age as me, so... Yeah, I don't remember anything about this uh, film. I don't remember anything about it at all. And it was you who put me onto it there last year, around Christmas time. Yeah. And I think you said to me that it scared the hell out of a lot of people when it came out. And I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised at all. <laughs> Yeah, so it's written by Barry Hines, and you know Barry Hines uh, is best known for the novel *A Kestrel for a Knave*, um, which was a classic movie in itself. Kez, I don't know if you've seen that movie. Uh, I haven't. No, I haven't. Oh man, that's if you think uh, *Threads* is depressing, Jesus, <laughs> that's a very depressed. That's probably the most depressing movie you'll ever see in your life. So yeah, so it's it's a kind of he wrote this. And he, he's famous for that uh, movie as well. It was directed by Mick, Mick, Jack, Mick Jackson, whose other, work, whose other famous work is Bodyguards with Kevin Costner, <laughs> which is a little bit different to this movie, I think. Um, I've never seen that movie, so I can't say. But the movie's about, um, it's a dramatic account of nuclear war, its effects in Britain, uh, specifically on the city of Sheffield in Northern England. Um, Sheffield is famous for its uh, steelworks, of course, and it centres on two families, the Becketts and the Kemps, um, as they go about their daily lives. And at the same time, there is a confrontation building up between the United States and Soviet Russia over Iran. So it's a little bit similar today, where um, you know we've Ukraine and it's like a proxy war between uh, Russia and America. So it's very similar. The plot and it's similar is because peop people are going about their daily lives and a lot of people don't realize how serious it is at the moment so that's why i was i was i was saying we should do this movie i i, I would rec strongly recommend people have a look at it and you know think where we are today i think it's still relevant yeah i just i just like to say as well the there's a quote from the narrator at the very beginning and i'll try and do the the suave british accent he says something like in an urban society everything connects each person's needs are fed by the schools of many others our lives are woven together in a fabric but the connections 
that make society strong also make it vulnerable. I thought that was very well written, the opening statement. Yeah, I mean, it 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 it, it does. Um, it's relevant when you see the whole movie that we're all connected, you know, in in different layers. It was shot on a budget of four hundred thousand. I mean, it's not. Uh, it's not. Uh, there's no. I mean, this, there's not so much um, uh, special effects, really. It's more the, the storyline that keeps it going. And it's like a kitchen sink style drama that the Brits, of course, do so very well. And when I, when I say kitchen sink, so what I was thinking about the movie, uh, introducing the movie, I, um, I was thinking of, you know, the, the Brits can do these kind of dramas, grit, gritty kitchen sink dramas so well because they have that industrial base, working class base. And... I was thinking like of other movies like This Sport and Life and as I said, Kez and Scum and ID and even the modern ones, Dead Man's Shoes and This Is England. And I actually I actually had written Jim, Jimmy McGovern's Cracker and and I just got the news that Rob, uh, Robbie Coltrane has just died. <laughs> so that was kind of strange. But uh, yeah, it's that kind of thing. But I think um, only the English can do this kind of movie, really, you know. I don't. I think if the Americans made this kind of movie, they'd have it'd be a very different movie. You know, it'd be some kind of superhero comes in the end and saves the day at the last minute or something. Yeah, I don't. I don't think they would uh, go in for the pessimistic outlook. You know, like from beginning to end, I don't think they would. And yeah, the colors as well. It's 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 pretty dull looking at it, even though it's in color. It looks. You know, everything <laughs> looks ashen even before the. You know the strikes, the nuclear strikes. Yeah, well, it's it's typical, as I said, kitchen sink British drama. You have the wastelands and the smoke bellow, bellowing out of some factory, and it's yeah, it's always dark and depressing. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what we were doing in the eighties in Ireland. What was Ireland like? <laughs> you know, we had no factories, so yeah, we wouldn't have had as much as much pollution as the as the Brits. That's for sure. Yeah. So um, I, I guess the central plot is, um, as I said, you have, you have two families, the Kemps and the Beckets, and the story is that uh, Root Beckett uh, is, is going out with Jimmy Kemp and the plan to marry. After learning that Root got up the duff, uh, she unplanned pregnancy, and um, so it revolves, uh, revolves around this storyline and how they're going about their life. They're planning. They're planning their future. They're moving in together. They're after getting a place to stay. And at the very uh, so, as this is going on, every day you're having the news. The situation in Iran is getting worse and worse and worse and worse. So you'll have br- radio broadcasts talking about the the situation in Iran, as they as as the people in Sheffield go about uh, in general blissful ignorance um, to what's happening uh, politically. I just say as well, this drinking life, you know, the opening scene of Jimmy and Ruth, they're in the car and they're up, I don't know, they're atop some hill, but the way the car is parked, it's kind of hanging over. I don't know what, like it's kind of on a headland or something. Mm -hmm. So it it looks like it's in a precarious position. And funnily enough, she says to Jimmy that she'd like to live out in the countryside. (laughs) Somewhat prophetic, you know? Yeah. Well, the whole the whole idea of that they have a non planned pregnancy and it's you know it it changes their life's life and then you have the whole idea of an unplanned war. <laughs> I don't know if that's a theme, maybe, but uh, you know, or, or or are these things unplanned these wars? But I don't know. Yeah, I was going to say as well the the theme around abortion, like it seems quite liberal. I can imagine in Ireland. That wouldn't have been really up for discussion. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, like the family more or less openly discuss it. Um, the Kemps, you know, at the dinner table. Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember that part, actually. <laughs> As we said, we talked about this movie a year ago. So <laughs> did you did you look at it again? Did you? I did. I did because I'd forgotten a lot of it. Yeah, I'd forgotten a lot of it. <laughs> You'll be found, you're going to be found out now. <laughs> I'll edit that part out, don't worry. <laughs> yes, yes, you're right. Yes, yes, I'll just pretend. Yeah, yeah, very good, very good. Yeah, yeah. that was a, an amazing scene, wasn't it? Yeah. The power um, of editing. <laughs> yeah, but it, it is funny that there is a class thing with the Becketts and the Kemps, you know. The Kemps are obviously working class and, and the Becketts are a little bit 
lower middle class, you know, they have that bigger house and it's on, it's on this, I think it's in the suburbs, but they are, they are actually listening to the news, uh, the father of the house anyway. And, and so, I mean, it's interesting that uh, how they are beginning to prepare for this nuclear Armageddon that they're, they're threatening on the news. And uh, so there is, there is a difference in how maybe, you know, the, like ordinary people, they don't really take notice too much of world events or at least listen to the news and listen to their politicians. Yeah, the working class, like obviously they're busy working and when they're not working, they're in the pub. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they, they're completely oblivious to what's what's coming, you know, they're completely oblivious. And I'm sure like they'd say, oh, it'll never happen. It'll never happen. But uh, I was going to say as well, there's there's a scene. Uh, they use it a few times. Someone has zebra finches. I think they're zebra finches. And you can see the, the these birds in a cage and they're like, they look panic stricken. They're, they're kind of fluttering about. And this is long before the the Armageddon, you know. And, yeah. and there is this idea, you know, that animals can predict when something bad is going to happen and they, they get out of, you know, they get out of dodge. And, uh, you know, if there's a forest fire or something like that, they seem to be aware of it before it happens. And yeah. you can see these zebra finches, they're very, very nervous. Uh, and they showed the scene of the zebra finches a number of times, just, just to get across the idea that, you know, the non-human, <laughs> the non-human characters know what's going on, yeah. whereas everyone else is, is kind of, you know, second okay. guessing or just completely oblivious like most of the working class yeah that's a good point i mean they do show the 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 birds um i mean there is the scene there's a sad scene later on I mean, maybe we'll touch on it with the young boy with the the birds when he's he doesn't know what to do uh he's he's seen his family wiped out and the only thing is he can go in and he, the only thing he can do is just go in and sit with the birds and and cry you know um at least I think that was a scene. <laughs> Can you remember that one? I can't, but I might have. I might have. <laughs> I might have nodded off. I might have nodded off in, in parts of this film. I have to say, not because I was bored, just because I watched it very late. You know. <laughs> Jesus, that better be in the movie. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. This is my first uh, movie review, so um, go easy on me. <laughs> but I, I was going to say. You're giving away. You're giving away the script you're working on. You know, for for the <laughs> the second uh, the second Threads film. Yeah, it'll be set in the bog in the middle of Ireland. That I'd be I'd be turning turf one day. And we say, what was you, that? <laughs> in, in that? In that case, you'd have your arms out for the nuclear bomb. <laughs> you'd be dying to get a, get out of that horrible labour. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Um, I have to give for, in, in 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 have to say that it is uh, you know I'm in Vietnam at the moment I, I don't know if you know that but um, yeah I've seen I've seen your last few videos they're all from <laughs> Vietnam but I don't know I didn't know if there were new ones or old ones that you'd put up yeah, yeah I do kind of mix them up a bit but uh, yeah it's the middle of the night here and it was a long week of work so <laughs> that's um, my in my defense in my defense um I, I okay so that's the basic story it's two couples. They're planning their future together, on unpl unplanned pregnancy. Both parents don't mind. Um, the couple love each other, and they're they're planning on moving into a new home together. And they're all excited. They're doing DIY in the house, and it's in that terms of the movie. It's a it's it's a happy happy movie. It's 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 a lovely setting. It's a lovely story there. But at the same time, escalations are going on in Iran, and the Americans and the Russians are beginning to go all out crazy in the world with nuclear weapons. So that's the, the basic uh, uh, storyline. But of course, uh, um, the movie centers on, it's kind of like done in three steps. It's the before, during, when the, when the bomb is dropped, what, what happens in, in the immediate, and then there's the after effects many years later. So um, let me see, just touching on some themes then, um, do you think that uh, it, 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 it shows the effects of a nuclear war? Is it realistic in that regard? I don't know, to be honest. Uh, from what we were told as kids, it, it seemed to tick all the boxes, you know. This thing about uh, the fallout being, you know, the, if you're not incinerated, then the fallout will get you within, you know, a few days or whatever. Um, okay. And, you know, people coughing, people coughing up blood. A lot of people in their houses and... 
I think what what was it the you know the British government told them that if you know if there's a dead body, you know leave it with you, but if it starts stinking up the place, then leave it outside your door. And yeah. they weren't going to they weren't going to bother with mass burials because they didn't have the didn't have the diesel or whatever for the machines. So there was already like very quickly the you know, the supply <laughs> chain broke down. Yeah. And I can imagine that happening. I can imagine that being very realistic. It, you know, we take it for granted. Like for example, I was in the supermarket today and I wasn't thinking, you know, this could be <laughs> this could be my last time in the supermarket, you know. <laughs> but if something like that did happen, like yeah, everything will, will Within within a, a day, maybe even less, you'll have people rioting and trying to get food, breaking into each other's houses. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, they had that scene, wasn't it? And there was fighting in the supermarket and stuff. And yeah, I mean, uh, so w w wait a minute though. I was told uh, I, I seen the videos that you have to hide under your desk and your table. Is that not you know in school you were? The, it's not what the Americans were taught. Yeah, yeah, and would you believe it? Seem seemingly, seemingly, it doesn't stop you being incinerated. It's very, very strange. You know? And, and what, but remember, we got the iodine tablets. Would they not do anything, or how, how did, did they work? I, I have no idea. Yeah, yeah, we'll just have to wait for the the science to come out once again and, and tell yeah. us. But um, yeah, no, it's it's quite catastrophic. Put on. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not drinking. I'm not drinking. I'm not drinking. It's, it's quite catastrophic. It's quite catastrophic. Apocalyptic. Um, <laughs> uh, the, the cat got my tongue with, with catastrophic, you know. So um, yeah, no, it's 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 a horrible scene. It's a really horrible scene. And mm. uh, you know, as we said there at the very start, like it, it's it looks quite depressing anyway, Sheffield. It looks quite depressing. <laughs> it could do with a nuclear bomb <laughs> wiping it out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's it is not. It is a a quite depressing, as you said. It's an industrial city. Uh, I guess this would this have been the time of Maggie Thatcher as well. Like yeah. it was nineteen eighty four. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just a horrible, horrible scene in general. And you mentioned that uh, Jimmy and Ruth are, you know, they're. They've rented out this house and they're trying to do it up. And if you remember, he actually, he goes out with some mates to the pub. Yeah. And he was told, you know, you've, you've got a woman to look after now. You've a kid on the way. But he seemed, he seemed pretty relaxed about that. He, he started drinking and he went with his friend and chatted up some girl. I think it shows him with the girl as well. Yeah. So yeah. I don't that. know what happens with him. Does he, yeah. does he just... Never, no, he does make it back to Ruth, does he? No, he he doesn't. He remember he was in the the bomb went off and he was working and um, he's in his van and I think he, he he crashes the van and that's it. You don't see anything else about it after that. Okay. Which was it, it? It leaves it open like we don't know what happened, but you can figure he probably died or something. You know. Right. It, right. There, there was a van crashed, so so she's on her own. Uh, yeah, we should add that that. that Jimmy dies, or he's gone, uh, when the, when the bomb hits, and the reason it, 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 the the reason Sheffield was important because I think there was a, an RAF base near Sheffield, so it would have been if there was anything like a nuclear attack, it would have one of the one of the rockets would have hit Sheffield because it was it's near a big RAF Royal Air Force base, so. That's why that would have been targeted. So, so yeah, when the, when it, when it hits, I mean, it totally changes the direction of the movie, you know. So you're this is serious now. There's a, a nuclear bomb attack, and Jimmy doesn't make it home. Some of the, some of his family, well, I think most of his family die, except the mother and the father, but they're badly wounded, and the Becketts survive um, for a while um, in their in their basement. But uh, Root is on her own. Uh, she doesn't have her man, so she's worried. She's worried about Jimmy, and that's the central part of the movie. It's the immediate after fact, after effect, and in the next few weeks. So, yeah. So that's what we're like. Would like this movie was made in the eighties, and in the eighties, we you know people generally like compared to the, today, we had our heads screwed on. I mean, with the Z, with the Generation X. Um, I couldn't see, especially the younger generation. I, I can't see how they, they can. How would they survive even without the internet or TikTok? You know. Mm. 
<laughs> you mean gener- Generation Z, yeah? Gener- Generation Z, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. I was just I wondering, you know, I was just wondering. If it's... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how they would, you know, I think they, they probably wouldn't even know, you know, even if even if they were told that missiles were on the way, they'd, they'd probably still be, you know, on Instagram. and. Meh, yeah, they don't you know, care. Yeah. They just shrug their shoulders and say, yeah, so what? Yeah. Um, I was going to say as well that Ruth, she escapes, doesn't she? Because she's with her parents in the basement and she won't eat. And she wants, she says she wants the baby to die. And then when they're putting out a dead body, she manages to escape. And that's when she goes out into the wilderness and she befriends some other uh, stragglers. And they, I think there's a scene where they eat a dead sheep. Yeah. Do, do you remember that? Yeah, I mean, there's a few scenes now when she's in that ragtag group of people. I mean, there's, yeah, so she, she branches out on her own. I, I think it's because her parents, um, yeah, she went out for some, didn't she go out for some food and then she returned and the house was, the, the, the parents were in the basement and they were, they were, they, they, they were um, robbed and attacked and left for dead. They died and someone, someone attacked them for food or something and, you know, so you, People, people will do anything for food. They'll kill, you know. So, her parents were dead, so she couldn't. The, the the room was rotting, no doubt. So she decided to join up with people wandering around looking for food. Yeah. So, I mean, it. There's a next. The, the other question then that that raises is that her family did some preparation. They had a basement. They stocked it with food. There was a little bit of preparation, whereas um, Jimmy's family did very little preparation they basically did it the day the day the bombs went off basically they just put a door against i don't know what what was it to put a door against the wall or something and hid under the door that was their basic preparation for a nuclear war but it, it that's the question of prepping you know people are big into prepping so i mean uh, what do you think about if should we be pre- preparing for this or is it just a complete waste of time because in the movie it's a complete waste of time well it was a complete waste of time for all those people in the 1980s who were prepping you know because there was no um nuclear attack in britain or western europe or north america but it's funny because when i was watching it i was thinking you know it, it's a matter of should i stay or should i go and yeah. mm. there is a family they decide to to go for you know to head for the hills straight away. Uh, I don't know who they are, but they have a, a kid and a dog, and they're, yeah, they're in the, the car, dog is missing, they? and the father's like, "Come on, we've got to go." And then <laughs> the dog the dog eventually jumps into the back seat, you know. But I think they get they get blown to smithereens, don't they? They, they, end up, they end up at a roadblock. And yeah, stuck in a roadblock for the whole thing. Like, yeah, there's, like, there's like a million other people with the exact same idea. You know, let's let's drive, let's get into the car. Yeah. So they're actually in worse condition. <laughs> they're completely exposed. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, could, you really... ma- could, you, could you imagine you're in the middle of the fucking thing? Oh, bollocks, I made a terrible mistake. And then you have the kid in the back seat saying, are we there yet? Are we there yet? <laughs> <laughs> but the father, you know, the father's a really gruff character as well, you know, he's like, he's like one of those no-nonsense working yeah. class fathers, you know, yeah. and you can imagine how he feels when he gets, you know, when he gets <laughs> this fucking roadblock, and he's told, he's told to turn back, you know, what does oh, he Oh, yeah, yeah, so, I mean, I think, I think people living in the countryside would have an advantage to the people in the towns and cities, wouldn't they? Definitely, definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. they'd have, they might have a few sheds and, um, to be able to bury stuff, whatever, yeah. Mm. Access to water beforehand, yeah. Yeah, um, I think I, I slightly, yeah. But but um, I mean, but then the question: Can you prepare for a nuclear war? I mean, how do, how do you prepare for a nuclear war? I mean, I, we we said with iodine tablets, but seriously, how do you prepare? You can't really, can you? I don't think so, unless those bunkers work. You know, the ones with the walls of lead. Yeah, Switzerland, uh, we had one, we, like we had a, a nuclear bunker. I should have took a video of that, it would have been interesting maybe. But, uh, yeah, in Switzerland they all have them. The, the, the old houses, not the new ones, but the uh, thing was by, by law you had to have a bunker if you were building a house up to the 1980s or something. 
But uh, but then you survive. I mean, what do you survive to? In but here's the question, this drinking life. You, you know, how long does it last afterwards? You know, the whole fallout thing. Like, because I, I don't really know. You know, obviously, you know, you, we hear about what happened in Chernobyl and people say that you can't, uh, you know, you can't still live in that zone, whatever. How, how long is it? Almost 40 years later. Yeah. You can't live in the zone. But yet they said within a very short period of time, you know, foxes were back, badgers were back, yeah. uh, birds were back. So I just wonder all, about all that. And then, you know, the cities, the only cities that we heard uh, was Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And some people say they were atomic bombs, not nuclear, whatever, nuclear weapons. I don't know. But, yeah. you know, those cities were built built back up straight away and, and they're heavily populated. So I just wonder about the whole aftermath thing. How long does it really last? Yeah, well, that's a good question. Yeah. I mean, because in, in the movie, it lasts years, doesn't it? I mean, you have you have the the, the radiation and the heat, for, and um, but then later actually it blocks out the sun, so you have a um, um, winter, don't you? A nuclear winter, so you have the two extremes, and it just kills all the crops. But you're right. I mean, does it really happen like that? And I'd also wondered because a lot of these nuclear weapons they've never been really they're in like they've never been used, of course, a lot of them. And they've been there for years. I wonder, what, are they still really functional? <laughs> I mean, that reminds me of the story. Didn't the British do a, a, a nuclear test and it went, didn't it go off hairwire? Didn't it? Do you remember that was a story a few years ago? It was done, I think it was done in the Pacific or somewhere, and it was, they couldn't control it or something, and it went. <laughs> you know? uh, I, so I'm, I wonder about some of these Russian nuclear weapons, like where could they end up? <laughs> yeah. know? I know that France, France was testing nuclear weapons in the Pacific, so it could have been them. Mm. And like some people will even say, now, I don't know about this, but some people will even say that there's no such thing. It's just a kind of boogeyman to make sure everyone gets into line. And that what happened to the Japanese cities was that they were firebombed. Uh, I don't know. I, I can't really say. I can't really say. But uh, if if there are uh, nuclear weapons, even like the ones we saw in that film, um, yeah, there, there's not really a lot you can do. And yeah. it looks like you're better off to stay put if you do have a basement. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but then that didn't that what the family did and they were attacked in their own home by people looking for food. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I think they noticed Root going into the house. I think, I, I, as far as I remember, I think that's how they clicked. Someone was in the house. I think they might have spotted her going into the house or leaving the house, one or the other. I think that's how they spotted. It. I'm just after finding it. I'm sorry. I'm just after finding it. Yeah, uh, in nine in 2000, and, I think it's 2000. No, 2016 test. Uh, the Brit, a British newspaper alleged that an unarmed nuclear missile veered off course. And headed towards the USA in a 2016 test by the British. Yeah, well, that's the Brits for you, you know? Fucking hell. I, I was going to say that I, I once met a woman, uh, she was an elderly woman from the States, and when she was a little girl, she I think her father was involved in the military, and they were testing uh, nuclear weapons in the, in the desert the, in New Mexico. And she was at the window. She says it's one of her early memories. She was standing at the window looking at these very small uh, mushroom clouds yeah. and uh, I don't know if you've seen the film The Hills Have Eyes no all oh, right it, it's one of those kind of Texas Chainsaw Massacre type films but the idea is that due to radiation poisoning some of the locals uh, turned into <laughs> complete oh. <laughs> monsters and they started yeah. killing uh, tourists and, and things like that but anyway yeah funny yeah yeah, so that could be a side effect, is it? <laughs> We're getting a little bit off course here, like that uh, British <laughs> test, you know. Boom, boom. Yes. Um, should we be really? Well, we, of course we should be worried, but is it is are the effects as dangerous as to say? Uh, do they have this arsenal? Is it real? Um, of course, some people say aliens will come down and. Stop it all! Isn't that what some some conspiracies? I've seen some of those uh, things on the internet. Have you seen those stories? The aliens will come down and stop it all. I haven't. I haven't. But I read a book a few months ago, and it was that idea that you know aliens would interfere before we wiped each other out. I think they'd be quite happy to see us wipe each other out. I think if there was aliens, wouldn't they? 
I wouldn't be I wouldn't be that pessimistic now. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> well, we this movie is very pessimistic, so it gives you that mood. Um, yeah, there's a the political aspect to the movie. We do have we do see some politicians in a in a bunker, uh, doing what politicians do best: being busy doing nothing, um, ringing and ringing and organizing and organizing, uh, oblivious to what's a- what's happening in in the outside world. Um, and they go on with this for a while. Um, so, you know, it, it shows <laughs> even even in the event. But they do, they do. There is some. The government do have some. Um, there's. They do have like uh, regulations, don't they? They bring out the army onto the streets. They try to take control of the country because the country's going going to pot. Try to restore order. They've given orders to shoot and to shoot and kill if if people. Are riotous, so there is the there is a political element to it as well. Yeah, I was thinking as well, you know, that the British generally, you know, the British government, they would be very good in that sort of situation where they would, <laughs> you know, like other gov- like I can just imagine, you know, the the present Irish government just dissolving straight away, and you know, all these all these uh, all these homosexual leaders running, you know, running. <laughs> Just running funny. into the forest or something, you know. I can just imagine yeah. this, but the the stiff upper lip of, of the the Brits, you know, they they really like having the idea of government and control. And even when the chips are down, they're like, right, we'll divide it up into regions, and yeah. uh, as you said, we'll get the army involved. And and actually, when I was watching it the other night, I was thinking of you because I remember the last time we spoke, you know, you said you said you were kind of of the political persuasion. Uh, don't tread on me, yeah. and. If you remember in this in this film, the government starts sending, and it's kind of relevant to what's happening today. Actually, the government starts sending people, you know, um, homeless people, uh, to houses out in the countryside. And yeah. there's a guy there, and uh, he he tries to block, you know, he tries to block the the police or whatever, and, and these homeless people from entering his house. And he's told, no, no, you have to take them. You have to take them. And he's yeah. like, he's saying something like. Uh, you know, I don't even know if if they're bloody contaminated or not, and um, they're, they're kind of pushed in his door nonetheless. So this thing of private property goes out the window straight away when there's an emergency. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Good point. Yeah. I mean, there's so many things in this movie that there's so many talking points that are still relevant today. Um, yeah. I mean, geez, what would the Irish government do? I mean, Jesus, could you imagine? We we would probably just beg the Brits to. To help us, because you know, if there was a nuclear attack in Ireland, in England, we we be fucked too, you know. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Uh, are we even a neutral country? You know, yeah, that's another it, thing. But it it makes the um, with the Russian thing in Ukraine. Remember when all the Irish media were snaring the Russian TV show? Remember the Russian TV show that had Ireland wiped out, as well as England. They did a mock nuclear attack on England just to say, hey, look, we only need one bomb to wipe you out. And it also included Ireland being wiped out. And all the all the D4 heads and Coveney and all were just like snaring the Russian TV show. Oh, but we're independent, you know, as if that as if saying that would protect Ireland if it got hit, you know. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Their heads are in the clouds. Yeah, it's. uh... You know, we're not we're not very far away from from Britain either. You know, we're not we're not yeah. very far away at all. Mr. Sheffield is is what near Dundalk or something? Is it across the Irish Sea, isn't it? Um, yeah, I was going to say as well. I just see here in a on a web website that it says a uh, the personal world of two British families in Sheffield, and then it has in brackets site of a major NATO installation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So any anywhere anywhere that's beside a NATO installation in the in the next few months should be getting very worried, perhaps. Yeah. Shannon Shannon Airport, for example. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I I I basically think Ireland is fucked if there was and they would attack England. There's nothing. You, you'd imagine maybe that there would be a tidal wave or something. Maybe that would wipe out Dublin or something, wouldn't it? I guess. Maybe. Yeah, it's hard to know. But as you said as well, like the the sky would be full of whatever, full of dust for a long time, and we don't tend to get a lot of sunshine anyway. So uh, there wouldn't yeah. be much of a growing season. 
Yeah. Well, so self sufficiency yeah. would would be out the window in a way. Yeah. Which actually brings me on to a point I wanted to ask you. You know this this thing of cannibalism. Like I I thought it would start pretty soon. You know I thought it would when people are very very hungry they would resort to that fairly yeah. quickly. But in the film, it seems to take a long time. And I don't I don't think we see. There is the there is the sort of sensation that it's happening, but I don't think there's any real vivid image of them eating no. a body, is there? Well, that might be the British sensibility. They're they're quite in. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think. Like, uh, there it kind of it, it kind of touches on it on the outside, all right. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Like, uh, I mean, w w like w w in your city, like if it, like if we were in the worst case scenario. What would you do, like in that movie with the alive and they crashed into the Andes? Would you be one of the people that ate the bodies, or would you be one of the people that tried to survive as long as possible? <laughs> it's hard to know. It's hard to know. I think I think survival would eventually kick in. And yeah. It's interesting, actually. That story, you know, alive. I read the book and how they sold it because there were some uh, of the passengers that were very reluctant to eat human flesh because it went against their Catholic belief, you know, yeah. and um, how they how they sold it to them was they told them that you know it was like eating the body of Christ, you know, yeah, and how God, you know, a loving God uh, would wish for them to survive rather than to fast and and to die. Well, so some I, people came around. I think there was one woman she she didn't come around to it, and she didn't last very long. Yeah. It wouldn't really be a religious thing for me. It'd be just I don't know if I could stomach it. I I, I suppose if you're if you're really hungry, then I'm you've probably hungry. you've probably already I've, eaten lots of human flesh on I've, your travels. I was just saying I lived in China, so who fucking hell? What am I talking about? <laughs> you thought you thought you were getting dog, <laughs> only to realise. Hey, there. I was living in a place in China. This is no lie, and um, I used to be fucking eating barbecue. You know, every fucking second night on this street, it was lovely, absolutely gorgeous. And then a few months later, I seen sort of half the meat in this place was rat meat, you know? So God knows what they're eating in that place. So, hey, the Chinese would be survivors anyway, wouldn't they? <laughs> I think so. I think so. You know, if, it, if it moves, you stick your chopstick into it. Oh, man. Okay, I was just thinking, like, um, even... I mean, the movie is still pretty good because even it's not so much like with the nuclear war. It's like you could still relate it to the modern age when things get out of hand in society. And, you know, the, as as we were saying, the supermarkets are not selling food anymore. They're shutting down. People are fighting. The economic situation gets dire and run out of gas, electricity. So, I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be a nuclear war for that to happen. Societal collapse, you know, and lawlessness. Um, that's so, a very good point. Yeah, that's a very good point. Or even just a natural disaster. Yeah. So I mean, are we ready for it? And I, I don't think I'm, um, that that is that is another thing as well. You know, when when things aren't going well in society, when you have some disaster like that, it's when you'd you'd hope that neighbors would pull together and you know there would be a, a common goal. But in a multicultural Britain, in the multicultural Britain of 2022 it would definitely be a free-for-all yeah well yeah in dublin as well wouldn't it no? yeah there's no there's no bond there there's no common th thread <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to i had to listen twice there i was like did he really <laughs> did he really say that yeah, no, you're right. You're right. You're right. I, I'm, uh, I'm writing. I'm writing the script for the next one. So yeah. you'll have to approach the the beep. You'll have to approach the beep, or yeah. as they call it, auntie. <laughs> but they would have a very different movie today, wouldn't they? I mean, you'd have the, you know, you, you, oh, but what about Mustafa at the end of the street? Surely someone must think about him. We'll have to help him, yeah. Or he would say about us, you know. Oh, be, be man alive, you just oh, fuck that. <laughs> all the scientists, all the experts would be Afro Caribbean. Uh, it'd be a rubber rubber bomb. <laughs> Bounce off somewhere. <laughs> Actually maybe that's okay then. Maybe that's like it's like 
It'd be like that woman in America who built the bridge, didn't it? It'd be fucking falling down after a few days. <laughs> did you did you see the video of the? It was somewhere in Africa. They they had uh, built a bridge. And they had, I think it was the president of the country. Did you see that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, it was like, you know, the ribbon that was to be cut. It was like the ribbon was holding up the bridge. Oh, yes, I see that. And when they, yeah. cut, the rib- when they cut the ribbon, the, the bridge fell. Yeah, yeah. Because Ireland, Irish, Ireland would be the fucking same at the moment, you know? <laughs> we, we, we're such a shithole. We'd be the fucking same at the moment, wouldn't we? Oh, man. <laughs> I just can't imagine our politicians really doing anything, really, you know? Maybe they'd get a flight, they get a flight out of the country. No, they'd set up a committee. They'd set up a committee. A 10-year plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> what was in there? Yeah, it'd be a very different movie. And then uh, that brings me into the, like, um, the walk kind of thing. And they'd probably, they'd, probably, they'd probably be a bit more sympathetic towards Ruth's story in the movie, I think. You know, she'd, she'd probably be a bit she'd come out a bit better in in a modern day movie i think yeah in a modern movie you know she probably she probably would get an abortion yeah <laughs> it wouldn't it wouldn't even be it wouldn't even be discussed you know it would just be like right uh, jimmy's not making enough money so get an abortion and actually but it, it'd, be, it, it'd be it'd be centered on the cat wouldn't it the cat would be the the, the baby Probably, yeah, probably. Have you seen that? Have you seen that in your travels in Asia where you've got women going around with, you know, cats and, and puppies in, in strollers? Have have you come across any of that? No. Oh, oh. Right. I've I've seen them I've seen them being barbecued. <laughs> right, right. Well that you know, there there's kind of a thing happening where you've got, you know, a young for example, a young Korean person or something and a woman and she goes to the park and in the stroller is a dog. Oh. And on the bench, you've got an old man who is licking his lips saying, you know, when I was young, we used to eat those things. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, I mean, it would be a different, it would be a complete, it wouldn't, I'm sure it wouldn't, well, it, it wouldn't be the same movie at all. It'd be like, because young pe- people would look at that, a movie like that, if it was made in a modern setting with the modern um, lay of the land, they wouldn't be able to relate to it. They wouldn't be able to relate to the hardship. They wouldn't be able to relate to, you know, I mean, the 80s was a tough time, really, even in Ireland, you know, we, we didn't, we weren't very rich. I mean, so we could understand, look, for me looking at that movie, I could understand it. But I don't know, you know, young people, they wouldn't be able to understand the survival instinct. They wouldn't be able to understand what to do in ter- to, to survive. They'd, they'd, they'd be... No, nah, the internet's not working. What do I do now? Yeah, but just to say, just to say, uh, this drinking life, watching it, you know, and as someone who you know grew up in the eighties and the nineties, the British working class are so similar to the Irish working class of that time. I, I can't, you know, apart from the accents and that, I didn't really get a sense of, of a difference there. Yeah, but I'm I'm talking in relationship to the modern uh, generations. That they, and I, I wasn't thinking, I wasn't meaning about the difference between Ireland and England that time. I'm starting to relate the difference between today's generation that they can't relate to the movie because of the, the hardships of, like, we, we can relate to it. We grew up in the 80s. We know what it was like. It was hard to get money. But for the younger generation, money is available either from the government or their parents or whatever. You know, life is easy. So they can't. They would look at a movie like that, and they wouldn't. They wouldn't. They wouldn't be able to understand it. No. Very true. Very true. We we were told as kids, you know, money doesn't grow on trees. But I think the you know the current uh, Zoomers or whatever they've kind of grown up. I fucking believe it. I think. <laughs> absolutely loaded. They've grown up loaded. Even even the working class uh, Zoomers yeah. have grown up with you know considerable amount of pocket money. Free money. From the government, yeah. And all the gadgets. All the gadgets. You know they can. They can get. Yeah. So I, I wanted to touch on on root then, um, like um, the reality of. See, this is one thing that kind of does my head in when I see modern movies. You know these modern movies, Marvel comics, and all these superhero things, and have women, and women are able. Like you see one woman, and she can do all this kung fu, and she can beat about five men. It's amazing what the women can do in the movies. But the reality is different, you know, and the reality of women in in a situation like 
like the movie or reality of a war, it's not very good for a woman. Yeah, no, no, you're right. You're right. Uh, women are in a uh, in a terrible position. And in the case of Ruth, you know, she has nobody. And there's even a scene where she's I don't know if she's had she's already had her baby at this stage. But she's sitting at a campfire with, you know, that ragtag group. And they're kind of look, you know, they're all staring at each other. <laughs> you know, they're all kind of they look really paranoid and they're all looking at each other as if they're sizing each other up to eat. Yes, and I, yes. I was watching that and I was thinking, you know, would even, you know, would a, would a woman and her baby survive, you know, with a group of men who are starving? No. I You'd mean, like to think that, you know, the men would, would say, right, this, this is the future. You know, this is kind of sacred. We can't touch her. But it, it, there is that sense that they're all looking at her as well, as well as each then, other. You and know? then it goes, it goes back to the culture. I mean, I think Irish people, I, I, a European maybe would not, but then if you look at somewhere like China and the in the the great great <coughs> the great march, no, but it, no, but in reality the great march with Chairman Mao, babies were eaten, you know. People there was cannibalism, you know. So, I mean, as as we, like in the in the modern day world, you don't know your neighbours, they don't know you, so you know it was a bit of meat maybe, but um. I was thinking that uh, I said like she prostitutes herself for some rat meat. I mean, Jesus Christ, you know. I mean, there's no feminine hero right into the rescue here. It's reality fights. That's a street vendor, isn't it? He he hands her out. He kind of counts them out. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember. Was what was the value of of a woman? Was it two rats or three rats? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but, but that was that's. You know, that was part of the movie and, you know, we're, we're only we're only joking like in jest, but it's important because it, I think that's that's the way it would go down, you know. And I think women would get into that role very naturally as well. You know, it's if you want to eat, you're going to have to do things that you wouldn't do, you know, in, in a modern society or, you know, if you have uh, access to a supermarket, etc. But when you have to eat, you know, yeah. morality is going to take a back seat. Hmm. And then we were related to the present with all the, the cooks and the soy boys, you know. Are, the, are you expecting a strong man to come out of the fold, to lead the way? Where are the strong men? <laughs> we haven't seen them in the last few, the last two years, really. We, we have in, in, in parts, but not, not really, though. Yeah, a lot of them have been neutered, uh, in a way. Uh, I was in a, I walked into a bar the other day. And there were about uh, 13 or 14 lads, you know, they're all, I said, they're all in their 20s, their 30s and their 40s, maybe a few in their 50s. And they're all, you know, I think they're on a break from work. They're all kind of builders and tradesmen. And, you know, they were all, you know, they're all talking in a, in a kind of gruff manner. And I walked in and, and they started uh, staring at me and I, st I stared at them. I stared back at them and I wasn't, I wasn't just trying to be an asshole or anything, but I just stared back and I wasn't, you know, I wasn't trying to be aggressive. I stared kind of blankly at them. And I was amazed to see each head look down on the ground, you know. And these are these are working class men. And I think, you know what I was thinking, uh, this drinking life, I was thinking every single one of them has rolled up the sleeve, you know. Yeah. And it's it's kind of, you know, whether whether they get sick or not is 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 debatable, but what isn't debatable is that on some psychological level they must feel that they're not what they were you know and that they're they're cowards uh, behind it all you know when there's when the pressure is on and there was a lot of pressure on in the last two years yeah uh, men who you would expect to be men turned into complete pussies yeah well i think it was been a, it, like the last two years was a great leveler really it showed showed who who's on on message and who's not you know definitely yeah it separated the wheat from the chaff yeah and, and in, in, in my personal um thing because yeah, i like believe it or not i'm actually naturally shy but for me this has been a, the last two year, two or three years it's been it's, it's given me power it's given me strength you know i mean when i think of people i know who are sh uh, all the shots and they're hiding behind a mask and shivering probably about listening to the news and you know it's like what the fuck 
you know, I'm only a little, I'm nobody, and these guys are fucking afraid, you know. So it's it's kind of been empowering as well, you know. Yeah, it's it's kind of become a, a cliche, even though it's you know it only really came out about a week or two ago. You've got a number of people now saying that the unvaccinated, you know, you've you've overcome the odds and you've beaten the odds. You know, the, there was never such uh, psychological pressure as there was, uh, you know, in the last two years. You, you had your job being threatened. You know, you had family members maybe turning against you, your friends turning against you, uh, people in your workplace turning against you. You had everything turning against you. And in my case, for example, I wasn't allowed into cafes. I wasn't allowed into restaurants. So you're, you're kind of told you're a second class citizen. And after all that hullabaloo and all that drama, you know, yeah. You still didn't roll up your sleeve. You still didn't take the easy way out. So, as I say, it's becoming a kind of cliche, but I think we should we should just remind remind ourselves of that that yeah. those who didn't get vaccinated, um, you have something that most of the people in the world don't have, and uh, I can't quantify it, but I sure can you know qualify it. It's it's yeah. definitely. You know, you just have something that most people don't have. And before before this scandemic, we didn't know. We didn't. Yeah. Well, I didn't know. I didn't know. I thought I thought everyone would think the same as me when it would come to this because it didn't seem believable. But yeah. you know, we were yeah. um, sorely mistaken. So so having said that, with the movie, with the same kind of scenario, you know, in rough times, you really don't know who's gonna come out fighting and who's not. You know. I mean, you really can't tell, really. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's, it's a very personal thing, isn't it? You know. Yeah, and it seems to be, you know, as we've noticed as well during this pandemic, it's not, you know, it's not dependent on class, your socioeconomic background. It's just down to the individual in this case, which way you're going to go. Are you going to run around like a headless chicken, or are you going to try and make some sort of plans, even though you know you've you you might have very little chance of surviving this. Yeah, so we're 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 set for a nuclear war. We've already been prepped, <laughs> you know. Probably, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I can I can crawl under my bed. That's what I can do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I just want to say, like, I mean, I was being a bit flippant with the the the, the mother the the mother prostitution herself. It, it was a very sad scene, actually, but. I, I think the reason why I was flipping is because it's it's it when you compare it to the modern movies and it's kind of given a false reality to women that uh, you know it's the world is not such a great place it's not so easy that you can you know you can there's a group of men and you can just do this and do that it's you have to be careful you have to be you have to be street smart and I think you know in this movie it shows the reality and no, for the reality for Root, it's not it's not a good thing. But she still survives, and I, I and I think she comes out of it as a uh, with more like you respect you respect Root, you know you, she's a battler. Yeah, and she's a worker as well because it shows her later on she's out working on the on these um, big open uh, vegetable patches. Mm. Yeah, I mean, and she still has a good temperament. She. She tries her best. She's not. You don't see her really. Okay. She keeps. She keeps it together. I mean, she is actually a, a feminine hero, but not as how it would be portrayed in a modern movie. I mean, um, maybe in an in an old fashioned way. You know. Yeah, she's not doing roundhouse kicks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's not twerking for a living and. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no twerking in this film, guys. So, you know, just just in case you, you thought there might be and you weren't going to watch it, we, we can guarantee you there's no twerking. Yeah, I think it kind of you know like when when she has the the child and she raises the child because she was pregnant through this process. You know, the child, <laughs> you know, kind of becomes a mute retard. Am I allowed to say retard? Is that an acceptable word? <laughs> Well, it's it's the right word, you know. It's the right word. The child is the child is retarded. Now you could you know you could string five or six words together to try and dance around that fact. But yes, the child is retarded. And I I got I sorry I got kicked off Twitter for using retard. 
So fuck that, you know. You, you should have told him you were speaking French. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think retard in French means late. So. <laughs> yeah, sorry to stop you there, yeah. Yeah, you were, you were saying, yeah, sorry. Yeah, no, I was just going to say that, yeah, it's true. She has some sort of speech impediment as well. Like, there's there's something wrong. And I think you told me this when we corresponded through email. You said that, or maybe it was in some of your notes, you said that, you know, that even language itself breaks down and, you know, vocabulary is decimated. They're just speaking, you know, it's like they're speaking in tongues. It's almost animalistic. Uh, yeah. Grunt sounds. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, work. I, I think in the movie they said work. Giza mean give 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 it give it. You know, it's like. But it, it, if there was a nuclear thing, it probably would happen like that. Because where would they get the education? Where would the, you know, if you're struggling for food all day, you're not going to sit down and teach uh, grammar and, uh, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, when the language, you know, when it's no longer a written language it's going to become a lot more simple. And actually there is a, it's kind of weird. It seems weird to me anyway, that, you know, so many years later, and this is Ruth's child. I don't know, she must be what, 13 or 14. And she's with a few other uh, teenagers and they're watching, they're in a kind of, it's like a bingo hall or something or a town hall. And they're watching, <laughs> it's a kind of real grainy uh, film. And it's, I think it's a TV show. And it's just more or less skeleton, 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 repeat, skeleton, skeleton. <laughs> and then there's some other word. And that's kind of it. And they sit there watching it, you know, and you've got an old woman who's mouthing the words, you know, silently. She's repeating yeah. the words. She can remember some words from her past. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So it's, it's like a gang of feral uh, children. So, so, so unfortunately, Ruth dies. She has, she has her baby. And and when she dies, it's it's a graphic scene when uh, the, the her kid is she dies many years after bringing up her kid. I think she dies after a hard day's work or something, and she dies on the field doing a day's work, or just looking, you know, working for a, probably working for food for a farmer or something. I don't know. And she dies, and the kid is just like, yeah, okay, her her own child that she lived for so long. To bring up, she she survived through all this f nuclear fucking thing, and basically when its mother dies, it's just like, eh, yeah, emotionless over her dying mother, you know. The typical zoomer, this drinking life. <laughs> typical <laughs> zoomer, you know. Yeah. She, she was thinking of getting onto OnlyFans as soon as possible. No, it's it's quite it is quite sad, and it means that the daughter doesn't really have that attachment to the mother. Once the mother is no longer moving or and speaking, um, she's no longer important for the child. Mm. And you can see it, like, I, I think she's, she might be on a bed or something in a shed. Yeah, and the daughter's beside her. She's after, you know, she spent the day working in the fields and as yeah. you said, and um, that's it. And, and the daughter just walks off then and, <laughs> I, yeah. she becomes pregnant then is she raped i think it, they imply that she was raped yeah she's she's hanging around with a few lads and yeah i think it is implied that she's raped yeah yeah i think she has a fight with some guy he's trying to take something from her and she's trying to take it back and then it ends up we don't see what happens but the the idea is that um either they have consensual sex or no, it's not, he it's rapes not, her no it's rape okay it is, it is implied yeah Okay, okay. Yeah, so it's like, um, uh, that would be the, the like, we're, it's animalistic. We turn into animals. We're regressing. We're regressing. And again, you could tie it in. I mean, you know, that's why this movie is so good, Threads, you know. I mean, you can tie it in with what's been happening the last two years. I mean, um, with, with the mouth being covered, we can't see each other speaking. And even say, like, young children now are, young children that had the mask on for the last two years especially in primary school and even newborns seeing all these people masked they're they have delayed speech you know i mean it's funny yeah yeah no it's it's true that there are a lot of kids who because seemingly when you're when you're very young you're watching uh, everyone's lips moving yeah and it's it's very important for acquiring speech so 
they didn't really have that in the last number of years. And as you say, I think a lot of you've got a lot of uh, speech therapists now. You've got a lot of these people working, trying to help them. Yeah. Well, as I said, it relates to the movie. Like the, the people, the, the people are regressing into grunting and Neanderthals, um, which is not a big leap for the TikTok generation, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> not really no not really <laughs> okay sorry we're, just... we're heading that way we're heading that way without, without uh, help. well we're heading into it, it you know that movie Id idocracy or what was that you know like it's like yeah what? idiocracy yeah <laughs> it's idiocracy yeah, yeah. It's, it's like it's a good film i watched that a few years back yeah it's it's very funny it's a very good movie it's a very good movie but yeah, so that's that's basically the end of the movie then you like and then Ruth's daughter uh, comes pregnant because she was raped and then do you want do you want to explain the final scene if you can remember it yeah I think it's Ruth's daughter and she's she's in it looks like she's in labor but she has a stillbirth and she's mm -hmm. just just holding this bundle of blood in her hands and she's she seems confused it's as if she didn't even know she was pregnant, you know, her the way she's kind of, re she reacts. What did you make of it? It's like literally no hope, is there? You know, this movie just says, just when you think, okay, maybe her baby will be the future generation, but still, it's still born, it's, it's gone, it's, which, 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 what they're trying to say is this is what, this is what happens. Nuclear, nuclear war, everything is gone. There's no hope. No matter how, no matter how hard you try, like Ruth, she tried for her child. She tried so hard. She kept going through through it all. She has her child. Be tired. Dead. She has a child. Dead. No hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a it's a family fun movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's one one for all the family. All right. It is. It is. It is quite bleak, and. It's almost as if, you know, despite the nanny state, you know, even years later, you still have some sort of semblance of a state, of a government, and it too has no future because uh, the people can no longer reproduce. Yeah, well, that's, yeah, so, I mean, it's all irrelevant then. I don't yeah, know. absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Um, so why do you think this film had such a powerful impact when it came out? Well, I think that was the... That was the mood of the 1980s, wasn't it? The the whole idea of the Cold War. I remember watching an episode of Only Fools and Horses, and I think they they Have bought a <laughs> they bought a bunker and they put it on a roof or something. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. It's on, it's on yeah. the roof of the fucking <laughs> what do you call it? What do you call it? the apartment block? It was on the roof. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like Mandela. Put, Mandela. Uh, what was it? Mandela. Mandela House, Mandela House in in, in Peckham, in Peckham. Um, yeah, so like th there was this very strong, especially in Britain. I don't really remember it in in Ireland. Like we would hear, we would hear on the news about you know the latest um, problems you know with the Soviet Union. I, I I don't remember much of it to be honest. I was very young, but looking at the shows from the nineteen eighties, it was obviously talked about a lot. And I guess uh, people. You know, if you're watching this on this Drinking Life's uh, channels, or if you're watching it on mine, people should, British people especially, should leave uh, comments. Those who grew up maybe in the 60s and 70s, and let us know, like, did you know, as children, did you have to hide under desks? What was was this drilled into you? You know, the way in the last two years, certain things have been drilled into the youth across the world. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think, uh, I think it resonates because it's a realistic movie you know there's no real special effects i mean the acting is pretty good i mean it's real real people real reactions so people could relate to it that bit more and they could relate to it because it's a the story of the family they you know they have the whole future in front of them and you know, there's there's no there's no silliness in the movie. It's a real movie for real people. You know, <laughs> that's. <laughs> you know? I I did read. I did read before we come on that there was a blooper, and that was that. <laughs> Ruth's, yeah, da know. Ruth's, Ruth's daughter has a tooth filling. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that, that, another, would, that, yeah, that go would ahead. make me. 
that would make me watch the whole movie again just to look out for that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember years ago in a newspaper, you know when Titanic came out in 97? I remember reading in the newspaper that there was some gaff where you could actually see the cameraman. It was like reflected in, in the glass or something. You could oh, see, you could see uh, the camera. Like yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. but yeah, there's a scene as well. They, they say that, uh, you know, because they wouldn't have had the great CGI back then and well, not so great CGI. They wouldn't have had the special effects that they have now anyway. And yeah. there's a scene of a cat dying. And in reality, it was a cat <laughs> under the influence, under the influence of catnip. And they had just reversed, you know, they had reversed it in time. <laughs> yes, I know. I read that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, for all the cat lovers, yeah. No need to get upset. <laughs> it was just a but, cat uh, on drugs, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think, like, what did I say they spent on this movie? It was like, what did I say, 200,000 or something? I, I think you said 400,000 uh, yeah, pounds, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it wasn't much, but I mean, and it, it, it does stand the test of time, doesn't it? It does, yeah, and that's another thing, that's another element, like, Back in the 80s and 90s, you would have watched, I'm sure you would have watched David Attenborough documentaries and all that yeah. when you were a young fella. When you were young, I presume you watched BBC documentaries now and then. For example, you get Attenborough. Sometimes the RTE would have them on as well. Yeah. yeah. So, for example, the Living Planet, Trials of Life. And you believed, you know, you believe, well, as a child anyway, I believed everything that was in those documentaries because it was science and you had that you know, authoritative British voice. And yeah. in this film, it's it seems very much like, obviously it's like a documentary, but it's also like a news program. And back then we we tended to believe in the news. Yeah, that's a good point, yeah. It's, yeah, yes. people must have been, as we said at the very start, people in, in Britain, when they watched this, they must have been just absolutely terrified. Yeah, they probably thought, <laughs> Jesus. Because <laughs> it, it, it it's, it's, is actually made like a documentary, isn't it? I mean, it's not because you have yeah. the, vo the you have the voice of overs telling us what happened, and it tells it. It doesn't just tell us what's happening. In the, it tells us the economic effects. It tells us the weather effects, as as a news report or a radio report. It, you know, it's just so you have that going on in the background. You know. Yeah, um, and you're you're swamped with statistics as well. You know, so many, so many hundred thousand people have died. So many million people have died. Uh, there, are, you know, it will be another two weeks until provisions can be acquired. You're, you're given data all the time. Yeah, which is an interesting theme, really. You no, know, I mean, is that is that kind of like the left side of the brain and the right side of the brain? You know, like the, you have the facts and the figures and then you have the you're meant to be looking at a route and a progress. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they give you they give you they give you two sides of it. So it, it kind of encompasses a very large section of society. Um, I just have two more uh, things to touch on, if that's okay. Um, the uh, some there's some very famous scenes. I don't know if you wanted to go through them. I mean, there's the the dead baby. Do you know that scene I'm talking about? When the oh, uh, the lady the lady is cradling the dead baby. I don't remember it. I do remember they showed footage of you know various people, very haggard looking, out on the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's walking on the street. I can't. I think it's not long after. Maybe it's it, and she walks and there's a woman and she's creating a baby and she has. You, you get to have a look and the baby's dead. I mean, it's a pretty vivid scene, but you know the the woman pissing in her pants. <laughs> um, I so can't think were, of it. I you were trying I must to have nodded off. I must have nodded off. <laughs> you were trying to go for the weighty teams and all the big. I was looking at <laughs> looking at all this kind of. Stuff. I missed. I missed the important the gore, stuff. No, I, the I gore, missed the important the gore, stuff. The gore. The gore. The gore. Yeah. The, 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 it, well, it is a famous scene. Like you know, when the it, it, when the alarms go off, immediately you have the alarms going off, and everybody immediately panics, and they're they're literally running nowhere. You know, you you can imagine you're in the center of the town. Where would you run? <laughs> yeah, the, that's another thing. You know, those sirens, like, the idea is that, you know, it's to warn everyone so everyone can, can be careful, but it ends up being a, a stampede and lots of people die. That's what happens in the movie. Yeah, everybody goes crazy. <laughs> it's like everybody's normal in the street, 
bang, there, it's it's hell for leather. But where would you run? Like, where would you run if you were in the middle of the town? Yeah, you, you just you'd have to get inside somewhere. I think pub, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> Order, order a, a double Jameson, you know, on the rocks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll see you in four years' time. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so there, there is the, the, the you can't see, like the the the, the piddle is coming down her her pants, and you see it coming out of her like uh, cuff of her trousers, the sh- in her shoes. So, right, um, is she running when it happens, or is she just like frozen, like standing there? I think she's just frozen. I think she doesn't know what's happening. Um, right. Right. And then and then we already touched on the the end of the film with the stillbirth. Um but I I I wanted just to to say one of the best lines on the movie and this is one thing I like about British movies that they always even even these movies are so depressing and like Jesus Christ I mean it's, it's the end of the world and there's no there's no get up from it. They do the English do like to put in little bits of humor in these movies you know and i think the best line was when mr kemp was sitting on the toilet having a shit (laughs) when everything becomes bright from the detonation of a nuclear bomb and can you remember his lines it's not something like blimey (laughs) it's close enough close enough bloody hell (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> very a very poetic ending, you know, for his, you know to his life. Very poetic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the typical British, isn't it? They love to put in that kind of humor, toilet humor. Um, yeah, there's not a lot of humor in this film, though. I have to. Well, from what I from what I saw, <laughs> there wasn't a lot. There wasn't a lot going on, you know. I think that Unless... was the only the only piece. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I I can't think of much else actually <laughs> in the film. I'm sure we could find it. I'm sure hidden maybe somewhere. Yeah, a um, few gems. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we're pretty much we we kind of wrap up a bit. Um, so uh, so uh, overall, what would what would be your final assessment of the movie? Um, between? I would say it's an apocalyptic movie, but not only apocalyptic, also catastrophic. Oh, yeah. apoc- apocalyptic and catastrophic. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's, uh, yeah, it's it's a very good movie, and it's quite realistic. I know a lot of people will say it's dated; it doesn't look real. But I think if you grew up, for example, in the eighties and the nineties, you would be able to associate with this film, and it would seem a lot more real to you. I think. You know, you you said the budget was four hundred thousand pounds, which is really nothing for you know the likes of the BBC, and I think it was very well put together. And you do feel for the characters, you do feel for Ruth. Uh, she she goes through absolute hell, and you know she is a survivor. She's one of very few who have survived, and. It also reminds us how civilization, civilization as we take it, is a very fragile thing. And they say you're only you know three meals away from a civil war. And I think should something like this happen, and as we said earlier, it doesn't have to be a nuclear bomb, but should some catastrophe happen in the West, a lot of us, and I include myself, will be found wanting. But there will be a few who will survive because they are born survivors. And I'd like to thank you, This Drinking Life, for inviting me on. I've enjoyed this chat and I hope we can chat again soon and perhaps review uh, another movie. Yeah, thank you. No worries. Uh, well, we, we will survive the nuclear attack anyway, I think. Anyway, will we? <laughs> no. While you were talking, I was just getting my bug out bag ready. <laughs> you you be in the the wilds of where you are in Spain, and he says, "I think they might be eating me here." <laughs> <laughs> they be they be prodding you, you know. They be prodding you to see see where you know the juicy parts of your. I I be on a spit roast. <laughs> Jesus, I'm fucked. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh yeah, you know, it'd be, it's all fun and games, but when the nuclear war happens. <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. 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 So th- that was okay, actually, I think, I, I guess, I don't know. For my first one, anyway. <laughs> no, I think it was good. I think it was good, and um, yeah, we'll we'll definitely we might get another one in before Christmas. I was going to say yeah. next next uh, Friday, I think. I'm due to do a movie review with uh, what's uh, Irish Fenian again, yeah. and we're going we're going to do the field. Okay. Yeah. So that that should <laughs> that should be a bit of, a bit of uh, I don't know, should be a bit a bit of fun. I think it's an Irish <laughs> film, but. You could tie it in with the taking our land and taking. I our... think so. Yeah, I think so. The fact that you know you work very hard, you work very hard, and um, it's then work. taken away from you. You know. 